Mary Mead, Annie here. I'm talking about breathing for a little bit today. I have already uploaded last year or the year before, I'm not sure which, a video on Ostara. I looked at it again and yeah, I don't have too much more to say about Ostara specifically than what's in that video. I'll put it in the text box underneath this video for those who don't want to search for it but have an interest in looking at it. I instead wanted to bring you in this video and one other video that I am doing a little bit of work with air which is so much a part of what Ostara is. In my tradition it is the beginning of the season of air. It's the freshness, the arrival of that breeze that moves towards us, touches us and even moves through us. The experience of being one with, being in and one with air. So, I wanted to bring a couple of things that are part of my practice that might be interesting for those of you looking for things to do to celebrate the season of air. Now these two things that I'm going to bring you, the one in this video and the one on the winds in a separate video, are going to be part of my personal ritual. And in fact, they usually are. I write other things in and out of that ritual, but these things stay in it. The first is taking on the practice of elemental breathing. Now some of you, especially if you've studied yoga, may have a sense of elemental breathing and your breaths may not be the same ones that I am going to refer to. I actually don't remember if these are the ones that I was actually taught or they are the ones that they became to me over time. But if you're looking for a meditation tool, if you are looking for a way to make yourself one with the airs around you and through you, within and without of you, you might be interested in this exercise on elemental breathing. What it comes down to is the four elements have a combination of whether you are breathing in and out through mouth and nose. They each have their individual way. I'm shifting. It's because Ernie fell asleep on my foot and I can't move. Thank you, baby. You realized that you had to move, huh? So... I am going to take a calming breath, speaking of breaths, and talk a little bit about breathing. Breathing is an active relationship to air. It's very, very important. I always think of the beginning of a Cat, Cat Stevens song when it comes to breathing. I don't think of the whole song because the rest of the lyrics actually don't apply, but I always like the lyrics that go, I listen to the winds, to the winds of my soul. Where they take me, only God ever really knows. And it goes on from that. But what I like from that is, I listen to the winds of my soul. I listen to the winds, to the winds of my soul. Wind as being part of our body, being something that is so deep. It's what we take in, intentionally, unintentionally, and what we give out unintentionally or as an intentional offering. The power of breathing. Oh, you could go on and on about the power of breath, the breath of life, how we calm ourselves and meditate, invigorate ourselves all through the act of breathing. So this is just a little touch on something you might consider doing. The elemental breaths. Now, when I do the elemental breaths, I do the mudras that go with them. And I do somewhere in my videos, have a silent rites video where I do mention these. I have mentioned them before. And that is that the thumb is considered to be the anchor. And we have two projective fingers. So they are considered to be fire and air. And then we have two receptive fingers, which are considered to be water and earth. So we have the mudras for the four elements as air, fire, water, and earth. I hold those mudras while I am doing the elemental breaths. Again, those mudras differ from person to person, from practice to practice. That is, I remember very definitely how I was taught they were. But 
they can be different to others. I was definitely taught the two fingers as the balance of projecting and the two fingers, which I always have a hard time putting up together, as the balance of receiving for air, fire, water, and earth. So, we're going to use a fourfold breath as an example, which is breathing four times. The breath of air in the nose and out the nose. We're actually using air and the scent of sense and kind of keeping, as air is a high vibration, that particular breath high up, high up in our body. It's almost like a feeding of the brain and a bringing through and back out through the nose again. Very high, this air breath. The fourfold breath is breathing into four counts and breathing out the four counts. So the air breath is four counts in, through the nose, a moment of intentional pause, then four counts out, breathing out the nose. So we have the elemental breath of air. And we have the elemental breath next for fire. The elemental breath for fire is in through the nose and out through the mouth. And the energy that goes with that, rather than the lightheadedness kind of energy that was air, it's we're breathing in through our nose and literally feeling it settle down to our lungs. Because fire, in my perspective, is a resident of the solar plexus. So we are breathing in through the nose and taking that down to feed the fire that is within us and then we breathe it out through our mouth. Think of a bellows, kind of in reverse order, but think of a bellows, how it takes in and out air. So for fire, it is breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. The air for the breath for fire. Next we have the breath for water. I like to think of the breath for water as making a reservoir out of your mouth because it reminds me very simplistically that it is breathing in through the mouth and out through the mouth. Think of your mouth as a cavern. You want to experience this breath as how it feels like coming in over your tongue which is so moist and wet. Your mouth is really cavernous in that sense. Coming into your body is something which is moist and nourishing and has a peaceful way of settling down in your body and then exhaling it back out through that again. I like to think of an image of a cave at the ocean where the waves come into the cave and then the waves go out of the cave. That is how I think of the energy of the water breath in through the mouth and out through the mouth. breath for water. And last we have, of course, the breath for earth. The earth breath is in through the mouth and out through the nose. The power of that breath for me is the intake through the mouth. The imagery I use is air moving up, up through me, drawing something up. It's that tree with the roots that go deep. So I take that air in through my mouth. I'm psyching this energy up through the length of my body. Sometimes it feels like out of the ground, and that's perfectly fine. And then I'm exhaling it as an offering outwards. So the breath for air is in through the mouth, out through the nose. You will decide what each one of those feels like to you. Come up with your own imagery for how to visualize the energy. As I told you for me, 
the in the nose, out the nose for air to me. I think of it as lightheadedness. That's how I focus on it. It feels like I'm floating. It's not about the heaviness of the rest of my body. It's like everything from my shoulders and my head lifting up for fire, bringing in something which feeds the flame which is inside of me and then in a sense bellowing out. So in through my nose and back out through my mouth. Water, maybe the easiest one to remember. In through the mouth and out through the mouth. The mouth has this wonderful, damp, dark oasis of a cave that you bring in moisture, life-giving moisture through, letting it softly settle down and nourish your body, and then you bring your body's moisture back out and make an offering of it and earth in through the mouth and out through the nose. And the power of that is bringing it up and then out is how I visualize that one. So if you want to do this as a full meditation, traditionally each breath is done five times. So you have the count of four, the fourfold breath, which is in four counts for a pause, out for four counts, five for each breath. And yes, it's no accident that that does end up coming to the magic number of nine as its numerology and where some of its power comes from. So you might want to consider in this new season of air what your body is as a bellows, as an in, as an out. Taking in air reminds us we are not separated from what is outside of us. Truly bringing it in through our body, absorbing it, taking what we need of it, and exhaling. It's a relationship to air this breath thing is. There is my take on the fourfold breath, which is a meditation I use throughout the year, but without fail, as I celebrate Ostara. I wish you mirth and reverence. Merry part.